Thanks for watching Wood and Shop. I'm Joshua Farnsworth. So a couple of years ago, I designed and built these dovetailed tool totes for my sons for a Christmas present and filled them with some old Stanley hand planes and some dovetail saws and some other uh, tools. Uh, and they absolutely loved them. It was a hit. And I recommend this project for uh, Christmas presents. So, but um, I shot a lot of video for this, but never ended up turning it into a finished video. So I've been getting a lot of requests from people for some simple beginner projects like this. Uh, and so I went into my archives and dug out some old uh, footage of these, of these uh, tool totes that I, that I put together. And uh, so, I, but I wanna share this tutorial, but I wanna make sure that I apologize in advance. Some of the footage isn't exactly uh, up to my standards now. But uh, I'm sure you can forgive me because this is a really great project and it's something that can be used with uh, materials from your home center. I wanted to uh, make this, pro design this project so that beginners could just take, uh, you know, like a, a board, a poplar board. I think it was a one by eight by eight, which is in reality a three quarter inch by seven quarter inch by eight foot long board of poplar and uh, you can cut that up and use it for to make one of these out of it and the bottoms is i think uh, a quarter inch uh, a quarter inch uh, drawer bottom if you can't if you can't find uh, solid wood you could use plywood just don't tell anybody but uh, this should be a really great fun project for anybody who wants to get started without having to first uh, mill their own wood uh, and who just wants something very simple. So uh, if you find this project helpful, then just subscribe at my blue button up there and share some comments. So thanks for watching Wood and Shop, and let's get started with this dovetailed tool tote. Start off by squaring off and cutting two of your pieces to 18 inches in length on a miter box saw. Make sure miter box saw is adjusted so that it cuts straight close to the line and you can square it off with a block plane after you cut it if you like. So I like to take the first one and set it on top of the board and scribe an exact measurement from the first one. And then I can cut that and so I have two 18 inch pieces and four 10, 10 inch pieces. And two of those pieces are going to be used to make the dovetail box. So if you don't know how to make a dovetail box or how to cut dovetails with hand tools, you can check out my tutorial on using hand tools to cut dovetails, and it's called How to Cut Dovetails by Hand. I am at the step now with this tool tote where I've gotten it all put together. You've probably watched my other video that shows how to construct a dovetail case like this. And so now in order to get this upper section, uh, you wanna take these other two pieces that were left over from your board uh, that's going to be the same size as these and you're going to want to glue them to the top so there's an upper level and you can see we'll cut them out to look like to look just like this and we'll cut a, a mortise in there for this tenon handle to go through so the key is is before you glue it up you've got to have a nice level and square edge so I'll go ahead and glue up these nice perfect edges because you can see you, you got to have a perfect fit there without a gap in order for it to glue properly. So we'll go ahead and glue it and I'll show you how I do that. Go ahead and set up your clamps and make sure that you have your board oriented how you want to glue it up. Give it a quick little squeeze. And there's a lot of videos on this. People do have their different little tricks. I'm just going to show you the basics how I do it. Nothing special, but it holds. Just squirt a little glue, not too much, and I like to just kind of spread it out. And it's gonna get a little bit messy. And make sure you get it all along both ends. And just, uh, we'll wipe up the excess with a damp cloth at the end. So then just <clears throat> put it together, give it a little back and forth motion there. All right, so I've got the edges how I want, and I'm gonna push them both down so that 
one isn't going over the other. We're gonna work on the handle for the tool tote. So I measured this to be a little bit longer than the actual length of the box so it would extend through the mortise. And so I just kind of drew out my design uh, on this piece of wood and then I cut it out with a bow saw. An alternative to using a bow saw for cutting out these handles is you can just take a coping saw, and this actually works really well, and just turning the blade sideways so that you can cut down like this. And just watch your line, stay away from your line, because we'll just go and shave it off more with a, a draw knife or with a spoke shave. So just go down and cut it out. So you can see that I got it all cut out, and it's pretty rough, it's not super close to the lines. Uh, so before we use a spoke shave, I really like to use a hand plane to, to get closer down to the line, especially on this where we want to be kind of flat. So you can see, I'll just take it and shave it down. And that saves a lot of, a lot of work. So here's a spoke shave. This is traditionally used by wheelwrights for doing curves on, on, uh, on wheels so you, you always pull it towards you or you can use a draw knife I like this because I can get in really tight remember that we use the hand plane already to get the top part so that saves a lot of work and then just work at it until you can get rid of those ugly saw marks and you can get the little curve here you can use some rasps as well if you need to and just do it all the way around it. I laid out the angles here to be cut off. On mine, I, I, I found the center and then I went out two inches from each side and then I went down an inch and then back here I went up an inch. So those are, those are my dimensions. You can do it however you like. And then I, I stuck the, uh, the handle here on there to get a rough idea and then I kind of cleaned cleaned up the, the dimensions here with, with this and drew it all the way, scribed the lines all the way around to the other side so that we can chop the mortise from both sides. I've got cut just barely on the outside of this line. And cut all the way through and do it on both sides and do it on both pieces of both sides. Before we start chopping these mortises out on both sides, you want to be you want to uh, be careful because keep in mind that if you start chopping along this line, you'll likely split split the wood straight across. Wood likes to split in the direction of its grain. I put uh, I chopped fairly deep there and fairly deep there so that when I put the chisel in here, I make sure I put it in a little further in. If you put it down here, it will split, but if you put it in just a little bit closer here, behind the line, you don't want to hit it hard still, but it will, it will stop the split. See, it's not going anywhere. And I like to make sure that I do not go, that I don't turn the, the, mort the mortising chisel that way because it could very easily split through, even though we got these breaks. So I'm going to show you how to start off. You don't want to start at the, the very edge, but start a little bit in and just go straight up and down and put, put your mortise chisel against the edge there. Get a few good, really hard wax, and then you're gonna walk, work, walk it this way. You can see it's taking some out. Don't go to the edge that way. Now we're gonna turn and go back the other way. And put it on a piece that hasn't been chopped yet. 
go straight down and walk it back and walk it back. And then once you get over here to this edge, you can put it right in the in the edge there, right in your your mark that you cut, and go straight down. You don't need to go all the way through because we're going to come from the other side. And you can do the same thing. Come back to this side. And go on, so on and so forth, all the way across. Do, do it the same thing here. It'll be a little easier since we've drilled that. That's going to give us some relief there. So do that there and across and back. And there and across and back. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to shape the end of this tenon to fit in the mortise. So we intentionally left a little bit too big. So what we want to do is put it in there and just slowly uh, whittle away or uh, shave a little more off the top and bottom until it slides right in there. Uh, you want it to be fairly tight as you do it, so you kind of have to pound it in slightly. And you do it on both sides, and on this one, this one as well. And once you've got them all shaped just how you want them, then you need to make sure you draw a little triangle like that, so that you so you can remember which direction it's supposed to go. So you can see here, I hammered this in part way until I felt like it was getting pretty tight. So then you want to look inside of the mortise here and see where there's some tight spots and you want to just take your pencil and mark all the tight spots. It looks like it's where it's being hung up on. And then once we know that, then we can go back and trim a little more off of this handle. Okay, so you can see I trimmed off some of the handle and also some of the mortise. I squared some of the spots up in there that looked a little bit too tight and it looks like it fits through, but be very careful not to do too much or, or you're gonna have some gaps in there. This one's pretty good. Okay, so now you can see that it fits through both sides. Mine aren't perfect, you could probably do better, but they're not bad either. It's all by hand without machines. In order to put the door bottom in, we need grooves that fit in the box. You can see here how it's kind of tricky with dovetails. If you look on, on this end, it goes all the way through, right? But if you look on the end that butts up to it, it's got to stop in the dovetail or else you'll see it uh, protruding on the end of your uh, on the end of your box because you want it to remain hidden like this. See, you can't see any grooves. Otherwise, you would see a groove coming through there if you didn't stop like we stopped right here. So we're going to use a wonderful plane, an old Stanley 45. On my website, I shared some uh, great places where you can buy these old antique Stanley 45 hand planes. And this will cut a, a nice groove. You can do it with other grooving planes. But you can see here it's got a fence here. And it's got your blade or your iron right here. And this will give it the distance that we need. You can see here between there and there and the blade goes through there. So let's cut some grooves here with this old Stanley 45. Make sure you set the fence on your plow plane up high enough so that your groove will be hidden in the tail here. You can see I'm doing a stopped plow groove here, but uh, you can also do a half lap dovetail which will hide this groove. I also use a quarter inch drawer bottom material that you can get at your home center. And uh, I just make sure that my cutter for my plow plane is wider than that material. So we've got your board in nice and firm. 
So the key here with this Stanley 45 is to make sure that you've got it adjusted, your depth adjusted. You can adjust, loosen this nut here and adjust this depth so that it goes down to how far you want. Uh, I, I like it to be about, what's that, eighth of an inch, quarter of an inch, probably an eighth of an inch inside of my board. And the key is, is to, to hold this fence up because there's a tendency for, for a lot of people to ruin their grooves here where, by not holding the fence parallel. So instead of starting back here, I like to start up here a little further and I hold the fence against it and I just start pushing. Now this is not a side escapement wooden plane, so you're gonna get a lot of shavings here instead of having it just eject out the side. So just, if you need to stop, you can. And you can work your way back. And then you can go the full stroke. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. These hold fast aren't holding very fast, are they? And you can see it bottoms out because I set it, I set this little depth stop here and here to bottom out for me at about eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch deep. You can see the mess that came out, but that's how you cut it. So. You can go ahead and do the same thing on your other boards, on your tail boards, but just set up a stop. I like to set up a, a board here with a clamp so it stops before it exits out <laughs> the end of your tail there. So once you do that and you've got the same depth, you don't need to adjust your Stanley 45 at all. You just use the same depth and the same fence setting and then you'll have a nice groove that goes all the way around and then after that you can we'll go ahead and we'll cut out a drawer bottom you can measure it I'll just tell you now you can measure um, once you get it together and then just make this a little smaller so that it has room to move back and forth in there just a little bit because wood expands and you don't want to pop out pop everything open this tends to go up because since we're not escaping and going out like on like on the pins here see with the pins we were able to go all the way out so there's no problem putting that groove down in there but with this since we're having to stop it kind of goes up so what you got to do is take your chisel at the line that you had drawn you can do this beforehand or or after and just kind of create a, a stop at about the depth you want to go and you'll need to go through and clean that out and make it the same depth. Measure all of the lengths of your grooves in order to determine the ideal dimensions for your drawer bottom. Uh, you don't want it to be too tight and butt up all the way against the edge of the groove, but you also don't want it too short so that there's a, a gap uh, when you look down into your box. And then you can see the line that I had originally drawn. I like to take a plane, a bench plane, and just go down. You don't want to go all the way off because it will, it will rip the edge off. So go down on this side. Then you can go back on the other side. I'll just do it like this to show you. And just get down to the line. And uh, I really like to, once I, I'm down to the line, I really like to go and give these a little bevel to get rid of any of the fraying. Okay, so we're going to put together the box and do a dry fit. I've already got this piece put together and I've got the handle put through one side. So I'm going to slide it through the other side part way. And then I'm going to get, before I can get it down to put the pins into the tails, I'm gonna pop that down until it's at the right level. And then a little further. May need to 
hit on this end here to take a little slack out so you can get this further down on. All right. And then we're going to work on getting this into here. It'll take a little fudging and moving around. You can see. I'll turn around so you can see that. Okay. And all we got to do is slide our nice drawer bottom in. And it will appear like it doesn't fit, but you just need to push that together. Then we'll put the last piece together. And we'll tap there, push this in a little bit. Wood moves a little bit, so you need to just force it sometimes. Well, all right. And there you go. So see, we still got our marks. So after that, all you need to do is uh, simply either sand or use a card scraper on the inside, on all the inside pieces, pull it apart and do that. Get rid of all of your lines and everything, make it nice. And then put it back together with glue and glue it up. And you can use little, you can, you can see my uh, video on gluing up dovetail boxes. Uh, so it will help you with this. And then you can put a finish on. This particular one, I'm going to put a, a milk paint with a shellac finish on top, one that I learned from a, a friend down in North Carolina. And, and you'll have a nice, fun tool tote. It makes a good gift. These two I'm making for my sons for Christmas and filling it with some old antique tools. Uh, there'll be some supervision with those tools, of course but it'll make a, a gift that'll last a lifetime. If you're interested in learning traditional woodworking with hand tools, visit my website at woodandshop.com where you can find free video tutorials, buying guides, and reviews. Make sure you subscribe to my regular blog posts and also check out my 10 steps for getting started. Enjoy!